Glambia is certainly making that cheddar, figuratively and literally, but which GPN brand has been cutting the cheese lately? I'll get to that introductory statement a bit later in this content, but on May 4th of 2023, Glambia updated the public markets by releasing its 2023 quarter one earnings report. I'll be utilizing that financial information along with the earnings call commentary and any relevant publicly disclosed information to obviously update you on the recent performance of Glambia and specifically Glambia Performance Nutrition, but also utilize everything to provide insights about the global sports and active nutrition markets. Just some kind of quick financial like mumbo jumbo housekeeping for us Americans. These numbers you'll hear throughout the content will only be on a year-over-year comparative percentage basis, so you won't be hearing revenue numbers in this interim management statement release, and that's because Glambia is not an American corporation and has different reporting standards for their public markets. Also, those year-over-year comparative percentages will be on a constant currency basis, which just means that currency fluctuations of the multinational company are stripped out for ease of comparisons. But enough of these formalities, let's start with a quick update on the financial data. Wholly owned revenues were down 2.4% year over year. This comprised of pricing being up 3.5%, but volume being down 6.2%. Glambia also had an additional positive 0.3% impact from acquisitions. For those that might not be too familiar, Glambia is made up of two wholly owned divisions. Let's cover Glambia Nutritionals quickly first because it's the division that I personally spend less time on, but don't let that indicate it isn't still extremely important to the overall business. Glambia Nutritionals is made up of two subdivisions, U.S. Cheese and Nutritional Solutions. Revenue was down 5.3% year over year, coming from a volume decline of 5% and a pricing decline of 0.8%. This division also benefited from acquisitions in the comparatives of 0.5%. While most of that divisional revenue comes from the U.S. cheese side, it's the nutritional solutions business that's higher margin and aligned within the value-add better nutrition focus of Glambia right now. Nutritional solutions unfortunately saw a large year-over-year decline driven by customer supply chain rebalancing. Now, Moving on to Glamby Performance Nutrition, which is made up of nutritional brands like Optimum Nutrition and SlimFast, among a handful of others, this division had revenue growth in the quarter of 4.6% year-over-year. The finished goods branded portfolio continued to have strong pricing power in the market, with it being up 14.1%, but price elasticity as demand caused volume decline of 9.5%. Let's look at the GPN revenue by region, starting with the Americas that currently makes up slightly more than two thirds of the total divisional revenue. This quarter, the Americas region branded revenue grew 2.2%. This was driven by mostly price increases across all brands, but was offset by a volume decline, mostly in the SlimFast brand. Shifting to the GPN international region, which makes up the remaining just under one third of the total divisional revenue. This quarter, the international markets, which also includes their international direct to consumer business, saw revenue growth of 10.3% year over year. GPN had strong pricing power across all products and regions. Volume trends in key regional markets remained resilient. Shifting into a product category and like a brand breakdown, Let's start this time with who cut the cheese. The worst this quarter, SlimFast. The weight management category has been a drag on the portfolio and honestly, the entire supplement industry throughout the last three years. With its recent poor performance, and that's putting it quite nicely, SlimFast is now only 12% of the total GPN revenue. Here's the good news though. The brand refresh is in market as planned and supported by new pack design, creative content, and product innovation. Here's the bad news though, it doesn't seem to be resonating with the market. This quarter, SlimFast saw a shockingly large 28.3% year-over-year decline in revenue 
and U.S. consumption decline that wasn't much better at negative 27%. Moving on, the healthy lifestyle product category continues to perform well for Glambia. This is the trio of brands Think, Isopure, and Amazing Grass. While the quarterly revenue was down a point, that frown really should be turned upside down when you notice that U.S. consumption growth across the track channels was positive 15.4%. The healthy lifestyle brands are going through a similar sales channel strategy metamorphosis as Optum Nutrition did a handful of years ago. So it's good to see distribution and sales velocity improvements in those large retail outlets. And then saving the best for last, which by the way, I'm thinking about the creation of a change.org petition for Glamby Performance Nutrition divisional name to be amended to the Optum Nutrition company. This one brand alone, which is what GPN has been built around since the very beginning, now accounts for 60% of the total GPN revenue. This quarter, Optum Nutrition had 20.8% growth and an even more impressive U.S. consumption growth of 36.1%. Optum Nutrition has benefited from its leading market position, expanded large retail distribution, focusing on launched innovation across categories like energy, hydration, plant protein, and dairy RTD beverages, and an ongoing marketing investment that includes the new More of You in You campaign. Now, I personally liked the brand development depth of that recent like proven marketing campaign better, but More of You in You is a like more simplified communication that has global appeal. I think the new campaign that was launched in late January does a good job at attempting to bridge the gap between the sports performance legacy positioning and today's consumer demands of everyday performance. We will see how it pushes the needle, but either way, with the recent Optum Nutrition growth numbers, what I referred to in this like last Glambia quarterly content has now happened. So congrats to Optum Nutrition becoming the most recent functional CPG brand to reach $1 billion in annualized revenue. But for this last part of the content, I wanted to talk through a recent like Glambia mergers and acquisitions transaction and what that could or should signal from my perspective. About a week ago, Glambia completed the sale of its share to Leprino Foods in a cheese joint venture it had shared together. This divesture created just under $200 million for Glambia. So the obvious next question is what should Glambia do with that extra liquidity? Like the Irish accountants that they are, I say that lovingly, they upped their share buyback, which maybe is a good idea, but it still left them with substantial liquidity and about $750 million in unused debt facilities. I know I've talked about this a year ago, but it feels like Glambia is at a bit of a crossroads right now. Path number one, do nothing substantial from an outside perspective and just use excess liquidity to rebalance risk tolerance to increase marketing and or product innovation. While this is a prudent strategy and probably the one that Glambia will choose, it just doesn't do it for me. Instead, path number two is add a large asset through mergers and acquisitions, I've kind of thrown out two compelling ones lately, THG, aka my protein, but you'd need to divest the beauty segment, and the other being the precision fermentation startup Perfect Day that would have all kinds of interesting future plays for Glambia. And then path number three, Glambia should start the corporate communications around a spinoff of its Glambia Performance Nutrition division into a standalone company with a dual listing in the United States and Ireland. It's an interesting idea, right? I think Glambia Nutritionals plus GPN brands should be more valuable together compared to the sum of its parts, yet I'm not sure Glambia has ever really gotten aggressive enough in its business strategy to fully capture that. Either way, Glambia has certainly become an increasingly fun behemoth to watch. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my new short-term goal of 3,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that basically 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.